in Black Ops 4, you probably got a playlist update that kicked off one of the first events of its kind within Black Ops 4, that being a two times tier boost within Black Ops 4 for multiplayer as well as Blackout, in which you can end up earning twice as fast your progression towards your next tier in the Black Market. This is something that of course is gonna be an awesome event to take part in over the weekend if you have some spare time, it can really help out. But when it comes down to it, we actually ended up getting a decent amount of stuff here, not only out of just the playlist update that happened, there's a lot of things we'll talk about here at this, but we also got some information from Treyarch about the upcoming days here and some things to look out for as well. So in this video, we're gonna be breaking that all down, letting you know everything that changed within this update and also what was also announced here earlier today as well in conjunction with this two times tier boost. So that said, without further ado, let's just jump into it. So first things first, like we mentioned, that two times tier boost and double nebulium plasma is now live for blackout and multiplayer and then zombies for the nebulium plasma as well. That started today at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and will go until November 12th, that being Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So it's available across all platforms. There's no exclusivity here on this one, whether you're on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, or PC, you should have this available to you right now, to which definitely grind this out, play as much as you want, and get some solid progress in for something that honestly takes a lot of time otherwise. Now, of course, I'm not necessarily talking about Nebulium Plasma in this sense. From my understanding also with the Zombies community, it probably would have been better suited to be double XP rather than Nebulium Plasma, but we have that. And also for the two times tier boost within multiplayer and blackout, something that usually takes eight days and eight hours at the very minimum to end up ranking up from tier one to 200, now can take half that time. So while you're probably still not going to get up to tier 200, at least put as much a dent in as possible so that you can end up getting a nice head start on what is gonna be the final week here of the Operation First Strike Season 1. Now again, in yesterday's video, brief recap here, we mentioned that probably the best ways to do this, if you can stay alive the whole time, I know that not everybody will be able to win every single game, and I'm not anticipating that. I know some people brought that up in the comments, but I think Blackout is in just the sheer amount of playtime and in-game time you have without breaks. If you can stay alive well into the top 20, top 10, and even win it, you'll end up having a lot of progress made compared to, say, if you play a TDM. So that's something that if you play Blackout this weekend, definitely I think it will help you rank up faster throughout those tiers, but you can play whatever you want. It really just comes down to how much time you put in game. About every 30 minutes now will grant you a tier within this weekend's double boost. The next big announcement here out of this, we're gonna skip over what is actually a part of this update as well in game for changes, but the other big announcement that came here out of this was a teaser for Nuketown finally coming here within Black Ops 4. Now we did know that from the very get-go it would be coming in November, not at launch, and this is gonna be something that's first on PlayStation 4 and then a week later for Xbox One and PC. But on Tuesday the 13th, just a few days away now, we will get Nuketown for PlayStation 4. We got a very small teaser, not all that much is known at the very moment, but that is something that is coming as of Tuesday. And along with that, it also seems like we might have a few things of surprises coming as well. Because later on in this blog post, after they ended up mentioning that Nuketown was coming to PlayStation 4 on Tuesday. It ended up saying that we end up having a major game update coming early next week, and these will include balancing tweaks, stability fixes, featured playlists, gameplay improvements, plus new surprises as we celebrate the launch of Nuketown this month in Black Ops 4. So what those surprises may mean, your guess is honestly as good as mine. I'd love to see something like the Nuketown camo come back free for all. That'd be awesome. Love that thing. It was very exclusive in Black Ops 3 for a little bit. But then when Nuketown was made available for everybody a few months after launch, it then also gave the camo to everybody as well in that extra category for camos. But when it comes down to it though, I'm still very much so awaiting the implementation of challenges for tiers and as well Blackjack Shop and their full releases in Black. Ops 4. I don't think we'll get Blackjack Shop on Tuesday based off of this sort of thing unless they do somehow want to put it all in together, but I feel like they're going to tease that as its own separate thing rather than just with Nuketown. So maybe a week later we see Blackjack Shop, but for now we have Nuketown as well as some surprises announced already. But as for this update, let's talk about some of the stuff that multiplayer and Blackout, the stuff that the core audience here on the channel may really be interested into, and then we'll go into the big stuff with zombies a little bit later on in the video, which is honestly a big cover just based off the content we've done here on the channel in recent times. It might not be right up your alley, but I'll give you guys all that information, of course, just to be thorough with it all. That said, for multiplayer, we ended up seeing some changes within hardcore, and this is something that now allows SMGs to have a one-hit kill potential at close range in hardcore. This was something that really came to light out of some Reddit posts and some Twitter videos, if I'm not mistaken, a couple of days ago, where people were showing videos of SMGs close quarters 
just point blank on the head and it wasn't one shot kills, which in hardcore especially is kind of surprising. But when you take a look at it now, you should of course be able to get that now in close quarters. SMGs do have that one hit kill potential and that's been adjusted accordingly. It also reduced the armor protection so that all weapons will now kill in two hits maximum in hardcore. So armor was that real big counter. Of course, you had stim shot, which allows you to regen your health once. And then outside of that, you ended up having the acoustic sensor, which if you didn't have a UAV or a recon up, it didn't help as much as it normally would. So therefore, armor was honestly one of the big crutch things in terms of equipment that you could end up having in hardcore. So it's interesting to see how this is tuned and what this will mean for hardcore going forward. But that's the change as of right now. As well, hardcore TD and hardcore kill confirmed will now allow two of the same specialists per team. We also ended up seeing that as of recently, they got an adjustment to which there were more players in each lobby. I think it supports up to six per team, unless they reverted that back to 5v5, but that was something that was adjusted as well. And now we'll see two specialists per team, sort of that chaos TDM style, but in hardcore as well. As for Blackout, there are a few things in particular that were changed out, one of them being the Paladin HB-50 sniper rifle, one that is found sometimes on the ground, more commonly probably in drops or anything, and my personal favorite sniper to use within Blackout. But we ended up having a slight increase to the damage to reduce the number of headshots required to take out an enemy equipped with a level 3 armor and 200 health from a trauma kit. So a very specific tuning here to this because that's something you don't come across all that often. Level 3s aren't as easily found anymore as compared to when they were first implemented in the very first passing of the beta. And of course, trauma kits, again, is a situational thing. But when you come across that, this adjustment in terms of damage is really just for this one specific instance. And they give a little bit of a detail as to just how specific it is. Literally for just this scenario, players would be escaping with four HP. So when we talk about that, that is honestly a very minuscule difference to cover that four HP compared to what there was previously. So it's just a very minuscule buff here to it. But again, covers that one situation, but if it's something that you're worried about completely changing the balance of the weapon and the meta of Blackout in its entirety, I wouldn't go that far just yet. Wouldn't worry about it too much or lose sleep over it. After that, we end up seeing that we have an adjustment to the concussion grenade. That was something that was buffed a little bit in terms of throw distance in the last update, but it was something that was also very powerful. If you guys remember, they took the nine bang out of Blackout and then replaced it with a more so powerful version of the concussion, but now players can change stances after they're hit with a concussion grenade, and while players will still be slowed and overall disoriented, they'll now have new opportunities to get back in the fight, which is something that honestly is the biggest thing to me. I absolutely hate the nine bang, both in blackout when it was there and also in multiplayer because you can't move, you can't go prone, you can't do anything. You're literally just stuck there and you can't see. So you're blind firing and don't have any way to reposition yourself. So unless that enemy comes literally right in front of your barrel, you're pretty much done for. So it's nice that the concussion now has been adjusted so that you can get away from these situations. And also another slight nerf to the concussion was that with the removal of the nine bang, they've scaled back a little bit of the white screen effect to the concussion grenade, and they're gonna be looking at it to do a little further if it's necessary. And finally, the last thing that was adjusted were some of the character missions, some of the descriptions for things when you picked up the token or quest line item were a little bit vague. One that I know in particular was profits, in which it said you had to finish a game with three three perks active, but you only had to activate three perks at a time to begin with. Then you had to win the game, and so therefore players thought that you had to use them and win the game at the same time, but they don't have to be. Additionally, some other things that were changed out were whatever playlist specific thing they were, so solo duos or quads. I know a lot of them are say finish top 15 or finish top five, but that really comes down to solos or duos or quads. If it's solos, you have to be the last of five people remaining. Duos or quads, it's just the last of five teams. So it works out in both situations, but that's been clear clarified a little bit now within that. But as for the zombie stuff, like we said, we're not going to leave this out because this was a big part of this and a big focus for Treyarch here with this update. They ended up resolving a bunch of issues that would cause the game to crash when near the mystery box, when a player dies or leaves the game when using the staff or raw special weapon in Chaos Story, as well as when zombies attack the player through barricades. On Voyage of Despair in particular, it resolved an error with the game crashing when a player leaves the game while using this fallen guard. In 9, the game would crash whenever somebody left during the main quest. That's been fixed. Additionally, if a player was contributing to their challenge, the remaining player would crash if somebody left. And then finally, in Blood of the Dead, there were two issues that caused the game to crash when a player falls, bleeds out, or leaves the game during portal events in the main quest. So a ton of things that as a zombies player would be incredibly frustrating to have to 
deal with, and the crashes are something that really, if you guys follow the zombies community at all, was one of the main reasons why Classified had taken so long to get the Easter egg, and I still don't know. I haven't kept up to date on it just yet. I know a couple of days ago people found the cutscene, but I don't know if anybody's actually completed it just yet, because it's you have to get to an insane round, which for the most part was impossible because of game crashes. So it's nice to see that the stability fixes here are overall encompassing the entire zombies environments, and hopefully this ends up fixing a lot of the things that people have had trouble with, but as it stands right now, there's a bunch of different stability fixes implemented that should help to combat crashing. Whether or not it fixed all of them, your guess is as good as mine. I'm gonna say no, just because they're still hard at work here on this, so obviously there's much more to be done, but that is really it for this update. So that said, that's where we're gonna wrap it up. Love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below on all of this. What is something that you're maybe surprised about out of these changes? What are you looking forward to? Looking forward to grinding out your tiers within this weekend's double boost? Are you looking forward to Nuketown? And what kind of surprises do you think there will be come Tuesday and that big update potentially that drops the same day? Let me get your thoughts and feedback on all of this, of course. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, but hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below, and of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Black Ops 4, multiplayer, blackout, and zombies. We got you covered here with the best of information, updates, news, best class setups, tips, tricks, all that good stuff. We got you covered here on the channel, so anything that interests you, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. If you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected with me outside of YouTube, practically live on both those. Probably going to be doing a lot of streaming here over the weekend on Twitch if you guys want to follow that as well link in the description below for Blackout and a lot of other things. I'm going to be trying to link up with a bunch of my YouTube buddies if you guys want to watch that. Again, link in the description below. That said, hopefully you guys have a fantastic day. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Espresso. Take care and peace.